All right, what's up guys? Your boy Enrique, PRG Real Estate, coming at you with another episode of Commission Only. And guys, it's the end of 2019. I hope you had a happy holidays. I know uh, this time for a lot of people is a time where we talk about goal setting. So I wanted to make this video uh, just to talk a little bit about you know, the process of setting goals and a little strategy that I have found to be helpful uh, for my team and I um, over the last few years. So as we're entering into this new year, guys, and we're starting to think about what we want to accomplish in our lives, in our business, how much production we want to do, uh, we're going to want to come up with some goals, right? So there's a little strategy. You may or may not have heard of it. It's called the SMART Goal Setting Strategy, SMART, S-M-A-R-T. It's an acronym. Um, I've learned this over the past few years, and um, it's, it's pretty simple guys, but it's really, really powerful and effective. So what SMART stands for, uh, the S stands for specific. So when you're setting your goals, the first step is you wanna be specific. Um, and a little analogy is like if you wanna lose weight, you can say, hey, I wanna lose some weight this year, right? Or I wanna have a better body. That's pretty vague, right? What does that really mean to you? Or you can get really specific with your goal and say, hey, I wanna lose 10 pounds, right? Now you're getting specific. And you can even break it down, you know, even further, lose 10 pounds, drop a certain amount of body fat, et cetera. But you have to be specific with your goals. You can't just kind of throw these vague things because then you're not really going to be able to put a plan in place around something that's pretty vague. So specific is the first key. Um, the second key of the smart goal setting strategy is going to be, it has to be measurable. Whatever your goal is, you have to be able to measure this, right? Just saying I want to lose weight, if there's no number behind that, you can't, how do you know if you're on track? How do you know if you're reaching your goal? So uh, what we always recommend is to break your goal down into smaller pieces. So let's say if you're in real estate like I am and you want to sell 25 homes this year, now that's a measurable goal. And then you can break that down even further uh, into each quarter and say, hey, I want to sell X amount of homes this quarter and then break it down to monthly and then go from there. So it has to be measurable so that you can track your progress. And as you track your progress and hit these milestones, it's going to keep you motivated so that you can continue to push forward with your goal. Um, so that's the measurable aspect. The next piece of the SMART uh, goal setting strategy is going to be the goal has to be achievable, right? You don't want to like set these impossible goals that are just going to maybe get you fired up for a little bit and then you realize it's impossible and then what happens? You lose motivation and you kind of go backwards from there. Um, your goal also um, should be something that you have the means to do, right? Or it's, it's going to challenge you, but it's also something that you can hit if you put a plan in place. So like if you say, hey, I want to make a million dollars this year, but you've never made a hundred thousand in one year in your life, that goal may not be achievable for you. I'd rather you break that goal down you know, try to hit your first hundred first and then kind of compound from there. So make sure your goal is achievable. Um, next one, guys, is going to be relevant, right? Is your goal relevant to your life goal, your whole big picture, right? What's the meaning behind your goal? There has to be a bigger picture uh, behind your goal so that you can stay on track. You can keep that motivation going. For example, if you wanted to learn how to speak French just on a whim, right, and that has nothing to do with anything else in your life, um, you may try that for a while, but it's going to be easy to fall off of that if it's not tied to any big picture. If it's just like, oh, it'd be nice to speak French because it sounds nice, what's going to keep you motivated? What's going to keep you pushing, right? So you want to make sure your goal is relevant to the big picture of your life. And the last part, guys, of the SMART you know, goal setting strategy is going to be your goal should be time bound. The last part stands for time. So there has to be a deadline, guys. There has to be uh, a sense of urgency that you're going to create so that you have a better chance of pushing and really hitting that goal. Uh, for example, have you ever gone on vacation and you have to do certain things before you go on vacation? What happens? You have a sense of urgency. You do whatever it takes to knock these things out, to go run your errands, to get all these things done because you know that there's a deadline, like you're gonna leave, you're gonna get on a plane, you're gonna go to Hawaii or whatever in a couple of days, and you have to knock these things out, and that sense of urgency really pushes you to hit those goals, guys. So that's the SMART strategy, right? The SMART goal setting strategy, kind of in a nutshell. Now, another thing, guys, that we have to think about when setting goals is that goals, 
there's not an end to a goal, you know, in, in my opinion. They're ongoing. It's an ongoing process when you're looking at a goal. Um, it's a process of evaluating where you're at with your goal. Sometimes you may set a lofty goal and, you know, maybe you're working towards it and you realize after a few months that you're not really on track to hit your goal. So you may have to reevaluate that goal. Um, and that happens all the time, guys. Um, and you have to stay flexible, right? Because if you're not flexible, um, then you're just going to look at it as a failure. But if you can readjust and reevaluate those goals, then you can get back on track to something that might be a little more achievable. Um, I'll tell you a story of, of our team in 2019. Uh, we came off of 2018. Uh, our team, we did like f over f almost 60 sales in the year. So to me, the next benchmark would be like, let's sell 100 homes in 2019. Um, really, I think that was a more of an ego play. 100 homes sounded great, right? To see like I passed that 100 mark with our team. But when I broke it down, um, you know, we started that goal in the beginning of the year. You know, a couple months later, I realized we weren't really on track with that goal and it wasn't probably going to be an achievable goal with the amount of people we had on our team, the amount of leads and all of that stuff. So I had to take a step back and reevaluate that goal. I had to really put something in place that I thought was going to be achievable for where we were at in that time of the year and with the resources that we had. So we reevaluated our goal, we adjusted, and this year our team of, you know, of a few people will sell about 75 homes this year. So um, I didn't look at it as a failure, I just did a, a readjustment and now we actually you know, surpassed the goal that, that we reset. So um, you got to remember that your goals have to be flexible, right? You have to be able to adapt and adjust as you go on. Now, another thing to keep in mind, guys, is when you're setting goals, of course, everyone wants to make more money, they want to you know, close more deals or, or create a bigger business, but you also have to be realistic, guys, that you know, just because you see someone else, you know, doing X amount of production, uh, especially in, in the real estate field, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're at that stage in your career, right? So just looking back at what you did the previous year, and if you were to increase your business by 25 or 30 percent and be able to do that consistently year over year, guys, that's a huge, you know, accomplishment. That's going to compound over time instead of just throwing these random, you know, um, numbers in the air that are only going to lead you to disappointment. So um, I would always you know, urge on the side of just saying, hey, if I go up 25%, 30% in my business, whether it's an income or unit sold or production or however you measure, that's huge, guys. Um, and lastly, guys, to kind of wrap this up, the part I want to add to the strategy, which is just you know, my own take on this, is, is just remember that this is a strategy, guys. This is something that works. Um, we all start somewhere. Um, I don't want this, uh, you know, when you're setting goals, guys, you have to remember you want to dream big as well, right? Like we can be conservative and, and, you know, be strategic and hit these numbers year over year, but don't let that stop you from setting big goals, from setting big lofty goals for yourself. If you want to achieve something big, guys, you got to think bigger. You got to dream bigger. Now you can dream big and say, hey, I'm going to knock this out over time. So I always, you know, want to think in terms of a five-year goal and then break that down to a three-year goal, then a one-year goal, then a quarterly goal um, so that you can go after that big giant picture that you have in your head. Um, so don't let it stop you from dreaming big, guys. We all start somewhere. Um, if you're always thinking small, guys, you're always going to stay small. So I hope this strategy helps, guys, as we wrap up the year and we enter the new year, guys. Let's set some good goals. Let's accomplish more than we did last year. And remember, guys, that goals are not always measured in terms of income or in terms of production. You want to look at goals from all areas of your life, from your health, from your spiritual side, from your family and how you're doing in all those other areas. Those are probably more important than guys in just the business aspect. So hope this message finds you well. We'll talk soon.